we're going to be taking a look at a scanner unit. This was this a unit that came out of a, a Canon uh, 3-in-1 printer. And uh, it is the uh, part that has the sensor in it that, that looks at a page and digitizes the page in, in color. It uh, has a motor that allows it to travel. So it's going to scan the page. It's a line scanner. It's going to scan a line at a time. So it's going to scan one row of pixels, then move and scan another row of pixels, and then move, that type of thing. And this is a little motor that does that. So I'm going to take that off. All right, so this is what we have left. It's just a bunch of black things that's hard to see. Um, if we turn it over, there is a PC board that travels the entire length of the unit, all right? Okay, so on this board, it keeps going, it keeps going. It's a very long board. This board contains a bunch of silicon sensors that are wire bonded to the board. So the, the silicon photo sensors are that black stripe at the top of the board. And then there's little gold bond wires. There's one, two, three, then one, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. Those little gold bond wires make attachments to that stripe of photo sensors that are pixelated photo sensors. Here we can get a little bit better look at that. Um, you can see the, the, the gold wire bonds here and the row of row of sensors, a row of pixels. Um, each strip of silicon with all of those pixels, you can't make one that's, you know, eight and a half inches long. So you're going to make a bunch of little ones and you're going to stack them together. And where I have it marked as a V here, you can see that there are two pieces of silicon butted up next to each other. And you can just see the little break between one section and another section. All right, so if we take a look at the optic side of it, um, we will see that there is a black thing here that I've marked with a V. It's very difficult to figure out what, what that is and, and exactly what part of this picture you're looking at, but it's just a black stripe. Again, it's really hard to see on this photograph, but if we take it on end and we show you a picture of it, you can see that there's just a whole bunch of little lenses, okay? So it's a bunch of lenses, and these little lenses are special. They're called gradient index lenses, and I'll describe those a little bit later, but they are rods. Uh, these lenses don't look like curved lenses like you're used to. They're little rod-shaped lenses. They're maybe, you know, a millimeter in diameter and maybe five millimeters long, and then they're stacked up all next to each other, and then there's a piece of fiberglass on the top and the bottom, and it's all glued together. And so there's a whole little stripe of lenses. So each little lens gets to magnify, create an image in its own little section. And because you have all these tiny little images, all those little images overlap and um, take the picture. At the end of that PC board was a little part that stuck up, a little additional piece that got put on. And in the upper right-hand corner, you can see there's a little um, window there. There's one little dark thing in that window and a couple other things. If we zoom in, we'll see that those are actually LEDs. So there's three LEDs in that little window there. There's a red LED, a green LED, and a blue LED. And so when we scan this page, we first turn on the red LED and we take a picture. Then we turn on the green LED and we take a picture. Then we turn on the blue LED and we take a picture. So for that one row, we now have the red, green, and blue information. And then we have to move the carriage and do it all over again. So every time the carriage stops, we have to take three pictures. Red, green, blue, move. Red, green, blue, move. Um, this is a very difficult thing to show in photographs. So I'll have to make some drawings and explain to you how this thing works. But this is a light pipe that carries the, those red, red, green, and blue pixels to the entire eight and a half inches wide of scanner. It's called a light pipe. And the light pipe has a particular shape. This is the end view of that light pipe. And again, I'm going to have to draw some pictures and explain it because it's difficult to get off this picture. I'll, I'll explain it, and then we'll come back to this picture, and I think it will make more sense. So let's look at the upper 
diagram here. It's a solid light pipe. Imagine this is like a glass stirring rod that you've just cut off. And if uh, light goes in one end, it'll rattle around in there and then come out the other end. That's what a light pipe does. And it rattles around because of total internal reflection. And it, it, it won't come out the sides. It, if you shine it in the end, the geometry is such that there are no rays that can exit the sides. They can bounce off the sides, but they can't exit the sides and they go out the other end. So that, that's a light pipe. Now imagine you take the same light pipe and you paint a white stripe down it. Now I've actually built these things using glass stirring rods and whiteout. I just painted a white line with whiteout along a glass stirring rod and you can get this effect where if you shine light in the end, the light will rattle around until it hits the paint. When it hits the paint, it gets scattered and it goes in all different directions. And so now those rays have the ability to come out the sides because you've changed the geometry, you've changed the angles because of that scattering. So now let's imagine that this is the light pipe that we have. It's a different shape. Um, and we painted the top of it white and we've injected the light in the end. It's going to rattle around in there until it hits the white paint. So you can imagine the white paint is like a its own light source. It's like, imagine it's just one long LED and light is coming out of that, that painted white section. It's going to come out and then the curvature of that light pipe is going to act as a lens and it will focus that light somewhere off in the distance. And it will basically create a mirror image, not a mirror image, but a, a duplicate image of that white line. So you'll, the white line will be the uh, uh, image and the, um, or the object, yeah, get it right now. Uh, the white line will be the object and then the line at the bottom is the image. So object and image, it's like a camera. Uh, you're taking that light on that stripe of paint and you're focusing it and it creates a line of light out in the distance. So let's take a look at our Canon scanner again. Um, you can kind of see that white stripe kind of ignore that stuff that kind of juts out to the left. That's just mechanical uh, structure that is so you can hold on to it when you put it together in the, in the, um, in the machine. And you want to be able to hold on to something that doesn't interfere with a light path. And so they mold a little feature off to the side there. But if you think of that white stripe and you think of that shape of that, of that light pipe, um, you can, you can kind of, see what I was doing in, in the drawing. And so anyway, this is what uh, generates the line of light for the scanner. You have red, green, and blue LEDs inject into this thing, and then you turn them on sequentially, red, green, blue, red, green, blue. It creates a line of light, and that line of light then has to be imaged onto a sensor somehow. So let, let's take a look to see how that's done. So let's talk about these magic little lenses, these little... Um, rod lenses, they're actually, instead of little bitty lenses, they're actually rods that act as a lens. So how does that work? Well, imagine that you have a rod, and we already saw that if you have a, just a rod of regular glass, the light just kind of bounces around in there and just continues on straight lines. It might bounce off the edges, but it just travels in straight lines. But now let's imagine a special piece of glass where the index of refraction is higher in the center than it is on the edges. It has, a, a, it has some type of gradient, and they call these gradient index lenses, these grin, grin lenses. And if parallel light comes in, the index of refraction starts to bend the light, and it creates a lensing effect, even though it's just a straight piece of glass, just due to this, to this index change. In fact, if you continue with a longer piece, it just continues to bounce and bounce and bounce around in there, right? So you could say, oh, maybe this is interesting for uh, fiber optics. Or maybe this is interesting for transferring uh, information from one into the other, like a boroscope. Um, so there are very uh, various applications for, for this technology. But how do you build these things? So the ones that are made out of glass use an ion exchange. They, they just take rods and they dump them in a, in a salt bath and they just cook them for a while. And the salt leaches in and replaces some of the uh, other chemicals and you you diffuse it from the from the outside in and so you create a gradient and then you bake it for a certain length of time and then you anneal it and and stop that process and then you end up with this gradient index lens 
There are also uh, plastic alternatives to this where you basically um, create um, different you, – you extrude plastic like with – with tree rings where you have a center core that's a higher index and then, and then you cover it with a different plastic that's a lower index. And then you cover that with a plastic that's even a lower index. And then you put those in an oven and they kind of all melt together and you can create plastic, uh, plastic grin lenses as well. So a lot of you may be familiar with grin lenses. If you are involved in fiber optics, fiber optics needs to be able to focus light that comes out of a fiber into another fiber or onto a detector or something. And a lot of times grin lenses are used for, uh, for that application as well. Uh, Cellfoc is a, uh, a name that you may hear, but that's a trade, that's a trade name for a particular micro lens from, uh, from Japan. All right. So what we're going to be using is a whole bunch of these lenses stacked with against one another and each lens acts as a little camera lens. And so, each lens will take a picture and then the camera next to it will take a picture and the camera next to it will take a picture and all these pictures are overlapped. And so you get one continuous picture of everything is lined up right. And that's how this, uh, that's how this particular, uh, how this particular scanner is built. All right. So that was the quick look at a scan head out of a, uh, like out of a fax machine or a flatbed scanner, things like that. They're all about the same. And I uh, hope you learned something.